everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And today we are going to talk a little bit about preseason week one. We're going to do some listener feedback. Uh, we're going to talk preseason week two, a little bit of Panther injury news, and, you know, a little of this or that. So, yeah, got a big show going on here, Jerry. Um, how you feeling? A few days removed from that first preseason game. Still disappointed. I mean, I'm still hold my reservations till this week, to be honest with you. And I won't let any of the listeners or followers that are watching on YouTube. If you don't want to talk about this preseason week one, go down. I'll mark it so you can skip to the uh, preview of the (laughs) other game or the injuries. I mean, that's negative, too. So, (laughs) well, you know, we're not going to spend too much time talking about week one we you know we did a whole podcast about it but um you know there are some things that we want to talk about we're going to do a little bit of listener feedback and that's sort of gonna you know uh merge into that a little bit um but real quick let's let's talk about a little uh we've got a couple of emails from some listeners uh luke wanted to talk a little bit about the o-line now this email came in before um the first preseason game so the o-line obviously a hot topic right now but specifically, he wanted to know what we thought about Brady Christensen this year and if Zavala may push him for that starting job at some point. Uh, I think both of us are pretty excited about the possibility of Zavala. Mm-hmm. And we like the pick a lot. Uh, and Brady Christensen honestly hasn't looked great in uh, training camp or the first preseason game so far. No, and le- again... I, I go back to the draft special that the Panthers released. They wanted mm-hmm. Michael Bergeron in the second round. Yeah. They were going to really have a tough decision, they said, but he went right behind or right above the <clears throat> Panthers pick. He's a guard. He was yeah. the top guard on the board. So I don't think this coaching staff has a lot of faith in him. And then they come right back and get Zavala. So yeah. I, I, if I was Brady Christensen, I would be worried. Yeah, I mean, Christensen, you know, left tackle in college and did well in college for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, moved over to guard, you know, last year and middling results. Um, so I don't know if we need to give him more benefit of the doubt in terms of he's still learning the position. Um, I've seen some chatter on Panthers Twitter that really is specifically a couple of people saying that Christensen should be the left guard and that Icky should move in and or, or should be the left tackle and Icky should move in to play guard. No. Which I think is ridiculous uh, because Icky had a really nice first season and I think he's going to be just fine. Um, so I, I think that's crazy, but it would not surprise me one bit if come week one of the regular season, Brady Christensen is not starting. No, especially if an Austin Corbett is healthy. Well, Corbett, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. Corbett's got to be on that line, in my opinion. But he's but he's going to play right guard, so we're we're talking left guard here. Uh, I mean, the problem is, is it Michael Jordan? Is it Zavala? Is he ready? Well, Michael you Jordan, know? it is definitely not. Yeah. I mean, he took Pat Elfline's worst player on this team award (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean early you know early results this season not been good for him but i i do expect to see the offensive line play a lot better in Mm -hmm. week two and we'll get into our week two preview here in a little bit but um i think that after week two we're gonna have a little less concern about the offensive line overall and again it's not fully healthy yet so even if they don't look as good as you expect them to look mid you know, mid regular season, which they won't um, just know that Corbett's coming back. And, you know, this, this line is going to gel just like they did last year. They're going to be okay. So Yeah. And here's the thing. I was going to bring this <clears throat> up later, but I wouldn't be shocked that they brought in somebody else as another tackle, yeah. a backup tackle. I'm not saying Moten or Icky are out on their way out, but a backup yeah. tackle and maybe another guard it depends if, you know, maybe a veteran guard out there that, they could plug in right away if they need to, if Corbett's because he, he mentioned he doesn't want to go on the pup list, which means he has to miss four games. 
So that's is it four or six? Did they change it to four? I I believe it's four. Okay, I know it used to be six. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, with cuts coming up and everything, there's going to be players available. There's going to be mm-hmm. veterans available. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all if starting left guard or right guard, if uh, Corbett's not available, week one is somebody not on the roster right now. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, one more email here from Elizabeth, who uh, she, she agrees with our comments about week one. She, you know, not getting too upset about it. It is preseason. Um, she says uh, she's it's a shame that she's going to have to ignore Panthers Twitter for the next week because of how overreactive <laughs> everyone is. That has played out. Yep. It has been uh, it's been an interesting week. Um, and But she says I think the biggest takeaway from week one is that Matt Corral is not an NFL quarterback. And we were pretty tough on Corral <clears throat> after preseason week one. I I I think I agree that he's not showing, uh, especially that he can be a starting NFL quarterback. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if in a couple of years he's just out of the league, playing in the mm-hmm. CFL or something. Yeah, I really liked his quick release and his ability to make plays, but 100%, he hasn't looked anything <clears throat> good at yeah. all. So, yeah. I agree with both assessments. I mean, he could be out of the league in a couple years if he doesn't straighten out. Yeah. They're going to give him all the opportunity in the world this preseason to show that he, you know, belongs on an NFL roster. So I would expect to see, in fact, Reich has already said that uh, Young is going to play about the same amount of snaps he did in week two as he did in week one, which I assume means that Matt Corral is probably going to play most of it, at least uh, probably all of the second half. I don't know if Dalton's going to play or not. I, I haven't heard that, but Matt Corral is going to be out there a lot. So we're going to get to see more Matt Corral in week two. I, I believe Reich said at the beginning of <clears throat> the preseason or training camp that he expected Corral to play 75% of the snaps in the preseason. So yeah, that, which is honestly good. I mean, that's what, that's what he should be doing. I, I'm not expecting Andy Dalton to really see much field. There, there's yeah, no reason. He, he doesn't really need it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we have some more, some YouTube comments. Maybe that we yes, we about. do. Um, thank you for your emails. And if you want to yes, email in, you, you can email at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. Uh, we got quite a few comments. Uh, so I'll read a couple of them here. Uh, for me, the could, or sorry, J Van K 8512. <laughs> Uh, for me, the concern is getting shut out. It's like I could hear the rational arguments behind why we shouldn't take this game too much. But underneath, I do hear a bit of concern. It, it, it's it, yes, 100%. There is concern because it was frightening. It, the To me, concern is not so much about the getting shut out, right? Because I really don't care that, you know, would I like to see them score points? Sure. But, you know, it was Matt Corral and the third stringers out there for the vast majority of the game. And I... there were, and they did purposefully leave points on the field when they didn't kick field goals. And, you know, they didn't game plan. They're not going to go for it on, you know, fourth downs in certain situations that they did in this game. And they will go for it in certain situations that they didn't in this game. You know, it's just getting shut out doesn't concern me as much as how bad the starting offensive line looked. That that would be the only concern, slight concern that I had coming out of the game. Getting shut I, out really didn't concern me. The, the shutout, yeah, I get what you're saying, but it's it still wasn't worrisome. fun. It wasn't but, fun. But my concerns were our defensive line could not stop their run. <clears throat> We could mm-hmm. not get anything going on our offense when our first string was out there. So that's what yeah. kind of concerned me. And I know Reich said that they weren't showing much, but that's still worrisome in my eyes. Ish. I mean, again, you know, they're not game planning. They're not blitzing. They're not playing. They're not playing the what you're going to see in the regular season anywhere close to it. I, I'm so, not on like a you know. breaking point of like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, I, I, why can I not think of the the codes um i mean would i like to have seen the panthers win 45 to 7 sure but 
losing 27 nothing in week one of the preseason it just doesn't get me all that upset i'm i don't know maybe i'm just a bad fan you are (laughs) um uh not b walsh 69 92 not chubby hubby that's our man he's a joke from day one yeah Mm. that's another position i Mm. can easily see them maybe going into with another person back there later on obviously referring to chuba hubbard yeah for those for those that didn't get the reference uh yeah i mean we've we've talked about chuba a lot and how we aren't sure that he's uh, going to be a capable NFL backup. So I wish they'd have kept Foreman. I mean, the, yeah, the contract was so cheap. I just didn't understand why they could, still could have gotten Sanders. I just didn't understand that. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I And that would have been a really good one, too, in my opinion. Yeah, it would have been great. But, yeah. but thank you, Whatever. B. Walsh. Yes, thank you. Um, Last one here. Um, the O line definitely doesn't like vanilla ice cream <laughs> because I don't know. I can see them eating a lot of ice cream. Well, they got simple stunts. We're blowing them up. So <laughs> I get that. And I kind of like that comment just the way he phrased it. Uh, <laughs> BR Lock Briox hmm. 53. So. Yeah, we got a bunch more YouTube comments. Yeah. Those were just the ones that we kind of specifically called out. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, fan reaction overall, you know, on our comments and in, on Twitter in general or X, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to keep calling it Twitter, but it's Twitter, man, has been mixed. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people that like us aren't overly concerned. And there are some that are, you know, the sky is falling. The The offensive line is going to be terrible. And, you know, uh, the receivers are awful and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So relax calm down like it's it's gonna get better this is the worst they're gonna look it is the worst that they're gonna look for the next six months it's gonna be okay let's hope okay let's hope yeah yeah i mean they still might not look amazing um you know but i think the people in my opinion who are the most upset about this are the ones who thought the Panthers were going to win 13 games this year, right? Like that was a bit of a reality wake up call for them. Because for me, who's thinking, you know, 500 is probably realistic, hoping for a little better than that, thinking that this team is good enough to be a little better than that, but probably not Super Bowl contender year one of Bryce Young and and Frank Reich. Um, Not as concerning as those who think that they're going to, you know, win the NFC by two games. Yeah. Right. Correct. So. Well, any last thoughts on last week or any comments or anything? No, nah, just, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this week. I think they're going to come out looking better, but um, unfortunately we're going to be without some guys. Yes. Uh, Demir bird return to Carolina has basically ended. They are putting yeah. him on IR pending a injury settlement to get him off the roster. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I think Shai Smith now is pretty solid on this roster. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about this last week. We didn't know, you know, for sure that he was going to miss the whole season, but uh, yeah, it, he, that is confirmed now. And it looked like he was going to make this roster. It yeah. really did. Uh, he was having a pretty good training camp. So that's a bummer. But hey, Shy Smith going to get another opportunity. Shy Smith has shown flashes. So hoping that, you know, if his number is called and we need something from him, he'll be able to do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terrace Marshall Jr. Uh, has some back issues. I believe it said that he's going to miss, what, four weeks or so? A few roughly? weeks. A few weeks is what I saw. Um, which, you know, could put him ready for week one, maybe week two, something like that. Um, I, I don't think it's been, I don't know if it's been confirmed by the team yet, but I saw, you know, Sheena Quick, who's a Panthers reporter, uh, mentioned that he was going to be out for a few weeks. So yeah, they did a back scan or something. Yeah, she's pretty solid on her reporting. I've, yeah, yeah. So, um, yep. 
Do you have any last other- one? Um, Miles Sanders just it's oh. pretty much been confirmed he's not going to play in the preseason. Doesn't seem like he's you know got any major injury or anything. I think it's just precautionary for him. So we will be seeing a lot of Chuba Hubbard and Spencer Brown and hopefully some more Blackshear. Uh, I'd like to see Blackshear maybe even get the starting reps this week with yeah. Miles Sanders out just to see what he can do. I mean, I like Blackshear. I think he's underutilized. I, I think he can't be worse than Chuba Hubbard has been. <laughs> well, that's definitely true, I think. I mean, I yeah. I, another player I had high hopes for, that's just not really doing it. So, Yeah, uh, Blackshear just hasn't had the opportunity. You know, honestly, I mean, yeah. anytime he's been out there, I think I think he's looked good and he's made plays. So hoping that we can get him some more reps this week. But like you said, I mean, I don't know, man. Dalvin Cook got signed by the Jets. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott got signed by the Patriots. You know, bringing in more running back help is, you know, those options are dwindling. Kareem Hunt's still out there, uh, which Leonard I think would Fournette, be out. Kareem Hunt. Mark Ingram is older, but I mean, I feel like he still could play a little bit. Yeah. Other than Cream that, Hunt would be a nice one too, if uh, you know he's not the what the Cream Hunt he used to be, but give him 120 rushes a, in a year, I think he'd be all right. Oh, oh, I would definitely take Cream Hunt. Yeah. I, good hands. He's a good receiving back too. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, out of Fournette. Cream Hunt. Uh, J.D. McKissick might be slightly interesting, too. Good, Yeah, good receiving back. But So, yeah, I don't know, you know, like I said, don't know if they're going to do that, but if it looks like Sanders might be in jeopardy to miss a couple of regular season games, then I mean, you could get, probably get Kareem Hunt for like $2 million. He's not going to cost a lot of money, you know? I think they should. I think they should sign up a good backup. I agree because of the simple fact that if you're running uh, Bryce Young out there, a rookie quarterback, you got Miles mm-hmm. Sanders, who's going to be your star running back. Why not get a solid backup to do a good solid one, two running back? That way, you know, if that running back's out, it's not, oh, it's a pass, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Keep that I'd love to see him. Ability. Yeah, I mean, especially like I said, it's so they're so cheap. I mean, and it's you know that's a whole other conversation as to whether they should be that cheap or not. But they, the fact is, they are, and you can get a good backup running back, a really high quality backup running back for little to no money. So the Jets, man, I think the Jets are going to be good. I do. They too. look good against the Panthers and adding. Kareem Hunt or not uh Hunt um Cook with Brees Hall gonna be coming back. Uh and then whoever they had they have right now, oh uh Carter. That's a really nice running back stable. They got Rogers, like oof. They're gonna be fun to watch, but this isn't a Jets podcast. <laughs> but, oh, also um Woo! speaking of the Jets, they are on hard knocks, and this week is the Panthers joint practices and preseason episode of hard knocks. If you want to watch it, I have not on purpose. <laughs> I well, have if you want to see the Panthers on hard knocks, this might be your only opportunity <laughs> ever. So as little so, as it is. So spot rack has Kareem hunts market value at 7 million a year. Yeah, but that, there's no way he's getting that. No, I don't even know. I, I, I didn't, I don't, I think I saw what the number for um, Hook was with Dalvin the Cook. Jets, yeah, or or uh, Ezekiel Elliott, but I can't imagine it was more than four or five million for either of those guys. Seven, yeah, seven yeah. for Cook. Yeah. So, I mean, Kareem Hunt's not getting that. No, no way. I didn't realize they were the same age. Cook and Hunt? Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott's going to make $1.5 million. So I agree. I think you could probably I get think that's... three more, three mil, and you could probably wrap them up in a bow. Yeah. That Well, that's his base salary. So I don't know. It, it seems like it's more like $5 million, But either way, 
I think you could get Hunt for around that. Um, and it would be good. I also think that they could sign up another wide receiver, you know, if one gets cut. Um, uh, the Panthers have 18 uh, million in cap room. I mean, yeah, they should use some of it. I know you can roll it over to next year or a portion of it at least. But man, give, you know, use a few million dollars and, and get some solid depth in here. I do wonder, though, if they're waiting on Brian Bird's contract because well, they, because what I've been hearing, I we're completely off topic of injuries, but <laughs> but with that Panthers being said, off. Nick Bosa is going to get a big fat paycheck. Well, and that's what they're wait, That's what Burns is waiting on. I was going to say, yeah. and that's what everybody is kind of waiting on, basically, in the Burns camp. And I think from what I'm hearing on the radio and everything, it sounds like there's an agreement in place of kind of like a percentage of the Bosa trade. That would be my guess, kind of mm. what I'm hearing. But what do you think it would be like 95%, 90% of what Bosa gets? Probably something like that. Yeah. What if Bosa gets like 28 million a year or something just ridiculous? Burns is going to be very happy. They're in. I mean, they have to sign Burns. But they do. I, they, they are. Burns has them in a great negotiating position. And we've talked about this so many times, but giving, you know, passing on two first round picks for Burns, mm-hmm. you just basically told Burns he can have however much money he wants because they can't go back on it now. They are committed. And they should be. Burns is great. And Burns is going to probably have 15 sacks this year. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the market value for Nick Bosa, according to Spot Rack, obviously take that with a grain mm-hmm. of salt, $28.6 million per year. Oh, that was a pretty good guess. It was. Yeah. So uh, Burns probably looking at 25 Yeah. 26 That yeah. puts him... Man, oof. Gosh. That puts him like... Right above Max Crosby. Yeah. Miles Garrett. Right around there. Yeah. I mean, Burns is in that league, I think. His talent is, at least. And and you got to think, Miles Garrett's contract was a few years ago. So. It always goes up. And the cap's going to keep going up. Like, it's in a few years, it's not going to look nearly as bad as it might look initially. Or as expensive, I should say. So, all right. Well, let's move on and talk a few minutes about week two here. Um, Again, it seems like Frank Reich is going to play Bryce Young about the same amount, maybe into the second quarter. Although I bet if they go out and they score a touchdown on their first drive, would it surprise you if he's out after that first drive? Yeah, wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, I... I think 100% this team is going to come out completely different than last week. I, I hope know so, that man. I, I think Frank Reich and Thomas Brown, even though they all said that, you know, oh, we're going to be vanilla. I think last week, the as much as they don't want to hear it and say they don't listen, that hurt them. That hurt yeah. them in the fields. They heard it. Driving to work, you know those guys live football, so they're listening to sports talk radios. Yeah. They're listening to that stuff, and hopefully, be on next podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> if you, any of you are, hey, shoot us an email. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, they we know camping. You know, oh. went went all in on the offensive line, told them that was not acceptable. Yeah, right after so, the game, like yeah. they pulled them in, and rightfully so. By the way, I. I'm trying to think of a fan club nickname, like Campy's uh, something like that. Uh, for, oh, for the, for James Campin? <laughs> so for our fan club for James Campin. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Well, I'll have to think about that. Any, anybody have any thoughts, you know, throw them in the comments. James Campin fan club. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, you know, talked a little bit about Blackshear. I, I'm hoping that we see some of him with the first team. Uh, or a lot more of him than we saw last week. I do want to see Mingo. I'd like to see Mingo catch a pass. I, mm-hmm. You know, I want to see them drop a couple of plays for him specifically. Um, I really don't need to see Thielen out there uh, more than a handful of plays like he did played last week. You know, I think he's going to be fine. Same with Shark, really. Keep him healthy. I would like to see Shark a little bit. I think yeah. 
I would like to see the connection between Bryce and Shark kind of happen on the field as we've seen it and heard it in practice and training camp. Yeah. I think Thielen is in a different realm in the sense that what he does is going to be, I'm going to catch these short intermediate passes. I'm going to run good routes. And I don't see that being questioned. With Shark, though, he's such an over-the-top slash, you know, deep route runner. You know, but his health is what I'm concerned with. Like, I don't want him out there more than he needs to be, right, in the preseason. Because preseason, it just – if he gets hurt in the preseason, then who cares? Like, it, you know, who who cares what he could have done in the preseason? It's preseason. May, I'd like to see him take a shot. But again, they're just I think it's going to be the same type of really, you know, vanilla and guys, vanilla just means plain. It just means, you know, it feels like some people don't know what vanilla means. It just it means there's no tricks. There's nothing special about it. It's just they're going out there and going through the motions. It's the same play that every team in the NFL, every team in high school knows like it's not. Yeah, there's no Patrick Mahomes. Fanciness. There's not the You're LaVisca not dancing Chenault around doing fake circles around. in the huddle. <laughs> <laughs> LaVisca Chenault fake end around screen pass yeah. to him. Yeah. Although the anybody who you know watched the Panthers last year knew that play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was if you if Chenault was out there in the backfield, you knew where the ball was going. Um on defense, you know, I'd like to see uh, kind of what we saw last week with the first team, you know, keep them to three points or less you know, force a, a couple three and outs, some punts, things like that. Again, they're not going to blitz. You're probably not going to see a ton of you know, pressure on the quarterback. Um, by the way, we're playing the Giants. I don't think I mentioned that, but, uh, and it's Friday night, seven o'clock. Um, anything on defense that you're kind of looking yeah, for? I seeing? want a better okay. run defense. That was okay. one of my worries coming into this season, going to that three, yeah. four, as they always tend to be a little bit weaker against the run. Mm-hmm. And it showed. Um, I also am hoping to see more from Amari Barno. Mm. Uh, and, and I say yes. more as I don't think he's done bad. My thing is more of him, more of him, because yeah. I see every time he plays a good bit of snaps, something positive pops out. And yeah, I would mind seeing him out there with uh, across from, you know, if Burns plays, I don't know if Burns is going to play or Houston. But I'd like to see Barno out there across from Burns for a play or two, just mm-hmm. to see, you know. Have them. I, I mean, think that would be fun. They're on a three-four. Brush them both. See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's not like a crazy play. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, I'd I'd like to see more of him as well. That was a good one, uh, Brandon Smith. I'd like to see him show some positive signs, some reason for them to keep him on the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but again, I I don't know. Um. I mean, the obvious thing, I guess, that we both want to see and all Panthers fans want to see is just keep Bryce Young off the ground. Right? Yes. <laughs> we don't want to see Bryce taking hits like that in the preseason again. I, I don't want to see grass stains on his jersey or yeah. rubber pellets stains. Because the Meadowlands. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I want to see Bryce Young kept on his feet. Um Make a few throws and get him out of there, you know. And it's just, and then it's going to be the Matt Corral show, and I hope he looks better than he did last week. I do too. I mean, I, yeah. not only does it struggle when he struggles, but those backup receivers, the Shy Smiths, the CJ mm-hmm. Saunders, those guys need you know a competent quarterback there because they can get open, but if the quarterback's yep. not getting them the ball. Right. You and I definitely don't see it unless we watch it on all 22. I mean. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's. um, uh, This is going to be one of Matt Corral's last opportunities to show a lot, because I imagine in week three. I don't know, with only I three th- preseason games, I don't know what what to look forward to in week three, if they're going to play him a half or if he's going to play at all. Bryce Young, I, I have no clue. I. I really don't like three preseason games just because I don't know what happens anymore because yeah, different, not, play, 
different. It's it's mainly us. Like we we want to know what what's going to happen. <laughs> We're used to the certain cadence of the four games, and we just don't know. But it's better for the players, obviously. No, but, no, no. I I a hundred percent like it. I think, yeah. yeah. But I want to <laughs> know what's going on. And the right. worst part is sometimes some coaches see it differently, and that's what's just so frustrating. Yeah. It has made it more interesting, I guess, is, you know, you don't know what teams are going to play their first string, how long they're going to play them, things like that. So, uh, yeah, well, we're not going to go too deep into it because it is preseason and, you know, we didn't do a ton of research on the Giants or anything like that. I don't know. I don't really care about what I'm seeing from the Giants, obviously. So it's, it's all about the Panthers here. And we just hope that. They look better than they looked in week one. Yeah. So I just looked up the Colts last season, preseason, their third game. Uh, Matt Ryan played seven or threw seven passes. Nick Foles threw five. Sam Allinger, okay. seven. Uh, uh, Philip Lindsay ran seven times. That's it. So their I mean, starters did play maybe a. Their running back did it. I can't think of his name, man. Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor Um, played on. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Richardson, by the way, named starting quarterback for the Colts. So, fun, fun. I don't blame them. Yeah. Why not? Like, they're probably not going to win a ton of games this year. Let him get out there and do some, have some fun. Like, he's just going to be a fun guy to watch. Yeah. 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 And he seems smart. He seems smart. He's picking it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, I, I don't think I mentioned this on last podcast, but QB1 behind uh, mm-hmm. on Tubi has Anthony Richardson and Bryce Young in high school, and they followed them around their season. I haven't finished it yet, but it's been very good. And honestly, Anthony Richardson looks like a really cool dude. Like in yeah. that, Bryce Young does too, but Anthony yeah. Richardson really kind of shined it in my opinion so far. Yeah. Agreed. Check it out. All right, Jerry, we got less than a minute to go on our Zoom. So, oh, my apologies. Wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. If you leave us a five star review with a comment on Apple Podcast, we'll read it on the show. We'll be back uh, sometime this weekend to talk about week two. And until. Keep pounding because Steve got cut off. Thank <laughs> you.